Coming up in primetime lawmakers, the Seneca's final passage to the constitutional amendment allowing state charter schools. Next stop, the ballot in November. Several Democrats cross party lines to give the measure its needed two thirds majority. Sales tax may be coming to those Amazon and eBay purchases. Governor Nathan Deal's long awaited tax reform bill is unveiled at a special joint committee today. Sweeping in scope, the bill will also charge tax on services like haircuts, casual car sales, and repeal the tax businesses pay on energy. Illegal immigrants may soon be prohibited from attending Georgia's colleges and universities. A bill classifying higher education as a public benefit not available to undocumented students passes committee. The bill to limit abortions after 20 weeks is heard in a Senate committee. Current state law allows abortions through 26 weeks. And to continue the discussion on reproductive rights, I'll be joined on set live by Senator Joshua McCoon, co-sponsor of two bills concerning reproductive rights, and Senator Valencia C., opponent of the measures. For Monday, March 19th, 2012, the 34th Legislative Day of the Georgia General Assembly, this is Primetime Lawmakers. Good evening and welcome to Primetime Lawmakers, GPB's nightly coverage of the Georgia General Assembly. I'm Scott Slade. Let's go live to the Capitol where Sasha Horn reports the constitutional amendment to allow state charter schools passes the Senate and now heads to the voters. Sasha? Good evening, Scott. That's right. The Senate was the last barrier standing in between the charter schools amendment and the ballot in November. Now that's when to vote when voters will decide if the Senate should have the power to create charter schools, even if school districts have already voted against them. Now supporters say charter schools give parents more options, while opponents argue it will take funding away from traditional public schools who are already under deep budget cuts. Now last month, the House passed the same resolution and since then, all eyes have been on the Senate majority to see if they could get enough voters to come to the, their side. Now that process has even made headlines in itself due to what some are calling aggressive lobbying efforts. Now Senator Vincent Vort touched on that a little bit today when he addressed the Senate. Democratic and Republican members of this body have been besieged by a Herculean lobby effort, robocalls, letter writing campaigns, phone calls, under, all under the auspices of creating a state commission to bypass local decisions made by school boards. Now, while charter schools are public, they're privately managed, and Senator Gloria Butler cited concerns stemming from Florida's charter schools and the for-profit management companies that run them. Now, she introduced an amendment she says would help prevent any of those issues in Georgia. I ask you to vote for my amendment so that we do not hire companies such as Academia that would come to Georgia and take money on the backs of our children. Now, Senator Butler's amendment was ultimately voted down, and it's worth noting that four Democrats switched side and voted in favor of the amendment. But voters will make the final decision on the ballot come November. Also in the Senate today, some tax talk. Many businesses that create jobs in Georgia are already eligible to receive tax credits. Now, a measure that passed the Senate today would broaden that pool. Supporters of the bill, including the Georgia Chamber of Commerce, say the measure is a good thing because it would expand eligible industries that receive tax credits to include more modern technologies, for example, biomedical manufacturing and alternative energy. But critics of the measure say the bill is set up in a way that rewards companies who create fewer jobs with larger credits. Senator Jason Carter, a Democrat from Decatur, expressed concern that the bill would exclude small businesses. The original version that was supported by the governor, that was supported on the first day it was introduced by the Georgia Chamber and the NFIB said 15. That means you can have small businesses that take, uh, that take advantage of these tax credits, not just people who generate more than 50 jobs. Job creation occurs in small businesses, period faster, better, more than it does in really large businesses. So why would we reserve this credit only for the biggest businesses of our state? We don't think that's a good idea. Now, Senator Carter proposed two amendments he says would have made the bill more inclusive to those small businesses, but both of those amendments were voted down and the bill went on to pass along party lines. Scott, All right, back thank, to you. Thanks very much, Sasha. The Senate Health and Human Services Committee is reviewing a controversial abortion bill this afternoon. The bill would limit the time a woman could have an abortion from 26 to 20 weeks. Pro-choice supporters have criticized the bill for not making exceptions for rape, incest, and mentally ill women. The measure has already passed the House. If it passes out of committee today, the Senate Rules Committee will determine if it moves to the Senate floor for a final vote and passage. No vote had been taken by our air deadline. 
Georgia ranks last in public corruption laws. That's according to a report released today by the Center for Public Integrity and other groups. The report graded all 50 states based on the strength of their ethics laws. New Jersey is at the top with a B plus. Georgia's at the bottom with seven other states with an F. No state received an A. While Georgia has implemented ethics reform legislation in the recent past, there is no limit on the amount of gifts lobbyists can give to legislators, a factor that contributed to Georgia's low grade in the report. House Ethics Committee Chairman Joe Wilkinson of Sandy Springs criticized the report based on the choice of the author of Georgia's section, former Atlanta Journal-Constitution editor Jim Walls, who also runs a blog, Atlanta Unfiltered. Representative Wilkinson says he will be asking for a new audit from the Center of Public Integrity. Now back to the Capitol and Sandra Parrish joins us. Have details finally been released to the governor's tax reform package, Sandra? Scott, no matter who you ask, the word around the Capitol is the new tax plan was worth the wait. You may remember lawmakers scrapped tax reform in the final days of last year's session when questions over numbers could not be resolved. It's good for business, it's good for families, and we think it's pro-growth policy. Governor Nathan Deal played a big role in the tax reform plan that lawmakers have debated for two years now. Senator Don Balfour presented the latest version before a joint committee this morning. It saves the individual taxpayer about $100 million over a three-year period of time. They, their birthday tax goes away. Um, there's a sales tax holiday. If you're married, you get an exemption for... Uh, you get uh, an extra amount of money there to the tune of $300 million from the state. You've got the ability um, to take the energy tax off manufacturing, and, and that hopefully will help some of those businesses. Sales tax on new cars would be replaced by a one-time title fee for all cars up to 7% by 2015. The bill would also tax online sales if a product is made here in Georgia. It is closing a loophole because... Uh, we currently have a requirement on the law that individuals uh, who are purchasing online are supposed to submit the use tax, which is the equivalent of the sales tax. Uh, but I, I dare say a very small portion of, of people actually do that. So far, reaction has been positive. I think it's improved from last year. I think the thing um, we're a little concerned about is the first year um, not raising the revenue that we thought. Um, but on balance, it looks uh, better than it was, and um, I think we're hopeful about it and um, grateful that the governor started this conversation. This is a much, much better version. It does have a guarantee in there for local governments that they are guaranteed basically what we have generated in the past from Avalorm and sales tax off vehicles plus a 2% growth rate. And so uh, our, our folks are very supportive of having that guarantee in the legislation. Democrats say while the plan is better than last year's, they are still concerned over a projected $53 million shortfall it would leave in the 2013 budget. There was no vote today by the committee. We're expecting that to happen later this week. The House Judiciary Non-Civil Committee passes out a bill today that would prohibit illegal immigrants from attending public colleges in Georgia. Not unlike other hearings dealing with the measure, the room was packed this time. The bill by Senator Barry Loudermilk would prohibit all undocumented students from attending any public colleges or universities. All we're doing in this bill is just clarifying, clarifying what our legislative intent was in 2006, is that post-secondary education is a public benefit regardless of whether it's directly subsidized or not, because it's in my belief that um, even if a student who is here illegally is attending one of our state colleges, universities, they are receiving a public benefit because, as you know, we go through the budget process, we budget a lot of money, the university system, and not all that goes to tuition. Some of that goes to capital projects, it goes to the buildings, it goes to the housing, it goes toward the computer systems that go into the public universities. University System Chancellor Hank Huckabee asked that a policy that began this school year that prohibits undocumented students from the state's five largest schools be kept in place. I believe our current policy addresses the concerns some of you have that the system should ensure that all undocumented students pay out-of-state tuition, that no Georgians should be denied a seat in the college if they were academically qualified because of an undocumented student, and that educating undocumented students would not cost Georgia taxpayers. General Assembly already acted last year. Why beat a dead horse? This time, let's follow the example of Arizona and move on. Turn the page.
The bill was amended to make it clear that only public colleges and not private ones would be affected. Also under the measure, anyone who applies for public benefits would only have to show ID verifying their citizenship one time. The bill now goes to the House Rules Committee before heading to the House floor. Scott. All right, thank you, Sandra. And now a reminder, there's much more video and information available on our website. Extended interviews, complete shows, and live House and Senate streams are available online at gpb.org slash lawmakers. Also, you can like Primetime lawmakers on Facebook and keep up with the Capitol News even before we go on the air. Online or off, Primetime Lawmakers is your source for all the news under the Gold Dome. Well, there was controversy in the Senate last week over reproductive rights and two bills that passed the chamber on crossover day. The first piece of legislation would provide that no health insurance plan for employees of the state shall offer coverage for abortion services. The second piece of legislation would provide a religious exception for the requirement that every health benefit policy provide coverage for contraceptives. Tonight, I'm joined by Senator Joshua McCoon, a co-sponsor of both those bills, and Senator Valencia C., an outspoken opponent of these measures. Thank you both for being here. It's a pleasure to see you both on Primetime Lawmakers. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it was seven days left. These issues are still boiling along. Let's start with that very first thing we mentioned, legislation to provide that no health insurance plan for employees of the state shall offer abortion services. Senator McCoon, you sponsor that. How big a... How big a factor, how big of a problem is that? How many times does that come up, really? Well, I think the issue is how are we going to spend taxpayer resources? And, of course, the state health benefit plan uh, does receive uh, a subsidy from the taxpayers of Georgia. And uh, the fact of the matter is that abortion services, taxpayer-funded abortion services, are something that, frankly, we want to get away from. And that's what the intent of Senate Bill 438 was. And uh, I think it's a very narrow uh, issue and one that was carefully crafted by Senator Crane. Are there any exceptions? There aren't any exceptions. And again, what we're talking about is using taxpayer funds uh, to provide these services. And I think that is the key issue here is how are we how are we as legislators going to use those taxpayer funds? Are we going to have taxpayer funded abortion in Georgia? That was the question as far as I saw it. Senator see how do you feel about that? Well, again, it's attack on women. I mean, no women was in the insurance committee um, that it was authored by men. And for us women, why should we have legislation prohibiting us from procedures that only women can have? Um, I've gotten tons of mail from around the world that was applauding us for standing strong, trying to make sure that the men in the Senate recognize that these are our bodies that we have a right and an obligation to think for ourselves. Um, one of the things that I had a strong opponent, uh, opposition to was the engrossment process. Here in the General Assembly, we get a chance to perfect, perfect bills. However, with a uh, bill being engrossed, things like rape and incest, which I had an amendment, it was engrossed, so we couldn't make a bad bill better. Senator McCoon, response to that? Well, I'd just say this went through the subcommittee uh, process, a full committee as well. And again, uh, this is nothing new. The Hyde Amendment at the federal level, going back to the 1980s, has established the principle that uh, we don't want to have taxpayer-funded abortion in this country. And that's all Senate Bill 438 did, is extend that principle to the state health benefit plan. Senator C, one more quick statement on that before we move. There were no employees asked because they do pay their premiums to have things covered up to and including abortions. Why should I pay my premiums and then have my rights denied because they're feeling that's part of what they, men cannot have that procedure, so it's still a war against women. Senator Nan Arik has certainly made that statement. Uh, and Senator McCoon, how do you respond to that? Uh, the, the bills like this are a war on women. I think nothing could be further from the truth. I think when you talk about, particularly Senate Bill 460, a bill I authored uh, to provide religious employers with exemptions from Georgia's contraception mandate, the issue is, are we going to allow the free exercise guaranteed under the First Amendment to the Constitution, or are we not? And the administration in Washington has put forward policies that frankly constitute a war on people of faith in this country. And the purpose of Senate Bill 460 was to provide a narrow exemption for those employers uh, so that they could be able to exercise their First Amendment rights. So, okay, Senator C, well, what's the matter with giving churches that exception to, to say that, okay, we, this is the umbrella, this is what we want to operate under? 
Today is churches, tomorrow is the world. It's just a continued chip at get, doing away with the ultimate, and that is the war against women and their own rights for their own bodies because they can think for themselves. Different issue. The uh, ethics report that came out from the Center for Public Integrity today, ranking Georgia last, uh, not because of anybody being caught with their hand in the till, so to speak, but because of the way the laws are set up now. Senator, your thoughts about that? Should anything, anything be done about that? Well, I brought forward Senate Bill 391 this session uh, to make some significant changes to our existing ethics law. I believe that there is a problem that needs to be addressed. Uh, I applaud the Center for Public Integrity for bringing this report forward because I think, again, it highlights the fact that we do have significant issues with our existing ethics laws and that we need to examine them and we need to make some changes. Senator, so you see a problem in ethics there, that things need to be toughened up? You're exactly right. They do need to be toughened up, uh, but I don't think we'll get it done. Another thing, tax reform. The uh, the governor's or the the, the committee was finally presented with, with the, all the specifics. We've been waiting on this for a long time. Everything from the energy sales tax exemption to uh, perhaps charging some sales tax on cash on, uh, on services. Some thoughts about that. How you think that might fly in the Senate? Well, I don't think it's going to have the type impact that we need. I think the tax reform that we really need to look at needs to be even deeper and go even further but we got to make sure we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Senator McCoon, what do you think about the tax reform package as it sits now? I think the tax reform package is a tremendous idea. I think we are gonna be able to move it forward. Having the sales tax exemption on energy used in manufacturing is huge. We're one of a handful of states that do that. Um, I've certainly heard from manufacturers in my district um, you know, they need this. It's one of their primary costs of doing business. If we want to grow manufacturing in this state, we've got to have that sales tax exemption. And so I think particularly that aspect of the bill is welcome. As far as the budgets passing the Senate uh, is concerned, do you see any major problems with that? Senator to see? Um, no, but we are going to be in appropriations hearings in the morning, uh, well, dealing with the budget in the morning, so mm -hmm. we'll see how that goes. But uh, the budget pretty much is already on tact. I do think uh, in light of today's action, there may be some changes to the budget, but we will see how that come out. Senator McCoon, any, uh, any word from you on that? Oh, well, I think we're in agreement. I mean, I think the budget is, is just about in final form. and. Uh, I expect that we will have a smooth sailing to final passage. HB uh, 954, still a committee right now, Representative Doug McKillop's bill that would prohibit abortion after 20 weeks in Georgia. The current law is 26 weeks. Senator McCoon, how are you going to vote on that if it gets to the floor? I intend to vote for uh, House Bill 954. Senator C? Of course, I'm going to be against it. Again, that's just another step on the attack on women and women around the globe are looking at what we're doing here in Georgia and it's unconscionable. Looking ahead, the final seven day, well, final six days now of the Georgia General Assembly. Have you got a priority you'd like to see happen before we're done? It end. The sooner we end, the less damage we can continue to do in the Georgia State Senate. Okay, Senator McCoon. Well, I am hopeful that we will be able to get a study committee uh, put forward on comprehensive ethics reform so that when we get out of session that we can spend time looking at this report that's come out today and fashion comprehensive ethics reform for the state of Georgia that makes sense. It's a pleasure speaking to both of you. I hope you'll come back to lawmakers. It's great meeting you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for, and thanks for your service. We appreciate it. Yeah. And now primetime lawmakers Jackie Britton joins us live for the Capitol with other headlines from around the state. What's going on Jackie? Thanks, Scott. Here are your state headlines for tonight. The Georgia Supreme Court said today that former Governor Sonny Perdue did not have authority to remove members from the Warren County School Board two years ago. The state's highest court said th three members should have should not have been ousted after the 800 student district in East Georgia was put on probation in 2010 over issues with the school board. Now, two of those members could be reinstated to the board. And a Denmark-based automotive supplier has announced plans to open a manufacturing plant in South Georgia, expected to bring 250 50 jobs and $15 million to the state. Governor Nathan Deal announced last Thursday the automotive emissions control and exhaust manufacturer Dynex Group will open its first U.S. plant in Dublin, Lawrence County. The 60,000 square foot facility is scheduled for completion by September. For more information on these and other stories, visit www.gpb.org news. And that will do it tonight for your state headlines. Scott, back to you. All right, thanks very much, Jackie. We've got to take a short break in primetime lawmakers, but don't go away. Much more to come. We'll be joined on set by one of the deans of the Capitol Press Corps. 
underscore Atlanta Journal Constitution's political insider Jim Galloway. Legislative analysis you won't find anywhere else. We will be right back. Welcome back to Primetime Lawmakers. It's time for our reporter discussion, part of the show where we tap our stable to the best political journalist in the state. Tonight I'm joined by Jim Galloway, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution's political insider. Great to have you back on Lawmakers, Jim. Good to be here. Well, it's really no surprise in how these two senators are going to come down on reproductive rights, is it? It's no, no, and, and, and th this is all going to be in the nuances here. The question is, will the Senate change the McKillop bill? And will they make any changes that forces it back into the House? And then when it gets back to the House, then let's see what happens. Let's see if it can run the gauntlet a second time with all this time running out. Indeed, because the time pressure is on six more legislative days. And one of the biggest things, were you surprised, is something as big as the governor's uh, tax reform package was dropped this late? Oh, no. No, no. Okay. No, no. This is now, now if, you, if you roll back the tape back to last Monday, this is what I said would happen, uh -huh. that this is going to be a, a, a mad sprint finish. Because you got to remember, this is a special committee that formed this, a special House Senate committee. It doesn't go through the regular committee process. It wasn't bound by, by uh, the 30-day the crossover rule. Mm -hmm. It goes straight to a floor vote in each chamber, no changes. We're seeing everything from eliminating the sales tax on energy to eliminating the, the birthday tax, as Glenn Richardson used to call it, right? The right. yearly tax it, on motor vehicles. But, but you're adding the sales tax on casual sales. Yeah, the, the title fee. Right, exactly. Well, 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 let's get into some of the let's get into the weeds on this for just a second. First of all, the, the energy sales tax exemption is something the governor really wanted. Right. Uh, hundred and the, what are the numbers you're seeing? Okay. Is that going to cost okay. 130 million dollars? Uh, it's going to cost 18, 18 million the first year, 55 million the second year. That's when it really ramps well, up. This is new. Okay. And then 94 million the 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 the, uh, the third year, and so that's going to need a lot of offsets there. I mean, basically, what the main message that House Republicans want you to know right now is that this package will re reduce uh, state revenue by $53 million the very first year. Uh, the, the second year, it re reduces it by, oh, let me see, $36 million. Uh, the most, the controversial part, of course, is the Internet sales tax. Okay. That's the part, they, they, what, what, what we're told is that in Internet sales tax will will uh, generate only nine million the first year, 18, uh, 19 million the, the next year. That's a lot lower than the numbers we've been hearing. That's, they, yes, it is a lot lower, and and it, it, it's the great unknown in 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 this this tax business. We don't know how much internet business is out there because we haven't uh, we haven't counted it yet. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that could very well be that that could be one of those soft numbers that really jumps up in the next few Boy, years. Boy, I'll say because some of the things we've heard have been up to 400, 500 million dollars. Even right, through. and what you're going to this this is a slow start. They've got to go they've got to go after these targets very very slowly. Okay. Remember, there's still a federal law that says unless you have a physical presence in Georgia of yeah. some sort, or your subsidiary has a physical presence, mm -hmm. that's what this legislation would do. Then then you then you can't charge state sales tax on a sale. Another place that they're venturing, where we have it been before in Georgia, is the uh, is sales tax and services, things yes. like oil changes and haircuts. Haircuts, and, and they get to that in here. And 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 this really gets at your 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 middle to lower income. This is where you start picking up people like you and me. Well, at least me start picking up a a, a, a bigger <laughs> bigger sh uh, share of the tax burden. Uh huh. Uh huh. And that'll be something that they'll have to push, obviously over the hump, because we've never done that before. Well, this is where it's stuck. To, this. Remember, this is where it stuck last year. Yes. Because Democrats rolled out some very, very quick numbers that showed that the that the that the middle and lower class were really going to get hit on income tax, uh, uh, new income tax rates. I think the, the Republicans have been a little bit uh, more careful this time, but but uh, let's see what the repercussions. The carrot at the end of this is a bringing back the sales tax holidays for back to school shopping. Right. Two sales, uh, we, we discontinued them in 2009 with mm -hmm. the Great Recession. Mm -hmm. This brings back two holidays, one in August. Uh, I think uh, I think they're 72 hour sales this time. They're extended. Okay. Uh, one's for back to school and then one in October for the purchase of energy efficient or water efficient uh, goods. All right, let's take in just a second to handling the sale of uh, motor vehicles mm -hmm. in Georgia. Because this would be a huge shift. Doing away with the Avrilorum tax, that yearly tag tax. Right. That, people that, pay. Gets, that gets phased out. Okay. And in, instead, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, people would pay a title fee 6.75% on any vehicle 
transfer. Exactly. Including person-to-person -person sales. Yes, yes they would. Think the car dealers like that? Uh, I think they would like that better than, well, what they'd like less is all these casual sales getting away without paying the sales tax. And will we do anything on the sales tax on cars, too? I read someplace they may take the sales tax off of vehicles when you buy them in Georgia if this thing goes through. Yes, well, it'd be just simply transferring, transferring. the sales tax. Okay, all right, that'll be huge. All right, move on to something else here. Absolutely. The Charter Schools Amendment, uh, you call that correctly. The Senate <laughs> took it up today. They passed it today. They got two more votes than they, need, they needed, and this sent it on to the voters. This sent it on to the voters. Uh, there, was, uh, there was a lot of horse trading. And horse trading can have many, many names. Uh, uh, just, just before we came on air, uh, Vincent Fort, who, who you had on film, uh -huh. uh, he called it a matter of corruption. Uh, deal making that involves jobs, appointments, maybe a little changes in redistricting. Now, where those, we haven't seen any of those deals yet, and, and, and Fort didn't call any names. So there's four Democratic senators, there may be a seat Okay, this is just what we've heard. Maybe a seat on the board of regents might pop up. You well, might see a judge on the high two. side. But okay, yeah. on the high side. All right. And these four senators might very well be drawn out of their districts next year. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, one, uh, one of them is George Hooks, who, okay. who voted f voted for it. Is 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 kind of he's in a, he's in some redistricting re redistricting trouble. Yes. Okay. You heard Senator McCoon just a moment ago talking about the ethics rankings and how he would like to push forward with mm -hmm. some sort of ethics reforms. Does it really come down, Jim, to finding the money? to pay to run the ethics enforcement machinery. Oh, no, 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 okay. no, no, no. This is, this is, I mean, you can cast it in, in some pretty strong constitutional uh, uh, lines. They, you don't, the legislative body doesn't like giving uh, any, any, any other particular body authority over its members. That's what this is all about. That's what this is all about. And, and what I, the one thing that I've seen this year that's really uh, interesting, if not encouraging, it's it's the Tea Party getting involved on this side, uh, and 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 Senator McCoon is part of that. Okay. This, the Tea Party has really latched on to ethics reform and this gift ban, as as an issue. In the 15 or 20 seconds we have left, uh, surprise me. Tell me something I don't know. What's what's around the bend here in these final days, or we've seen all the surprises come out of the box. No, you've got you've got a couple bills. Uh, number one, watch SB 448. That's a that's a, a bill that escaped the Senate very very with with very little opposition. It would it would give uh, private developers uh, an escape clause in okay. in their in their loans uh, loans that banks gave them for failed projects. Okay, uh, a bailout, if you will. Ah, uh, the, the the CEO of Bank South uh, has come out with a with a with a letter to House Republican uh, leaders saying basically. These Senate, these Senate guys are crazy. You've got to fix this. We're going to watch for that. Thanks, Jim. It's always great to see you. Enjoy Thanks it. for the inside story. Coming up tomorrow on Lawmakers, the State Appropriations Committee is expected to pass the FY 2013 budget. The bill that funds the state beginning on July 1st. The bill could be on the Senate floor later this week. Plus all the latest news from out of the Gold Dome tomorrow on Primetime Lawmakers at 7. Live coverage of tomorrow's and every day session available on our website at gpb.org slash lawmakers. While you're there, check out our extended interviews and other videos. Legislative coverage available 24-7 at gpb.org slash lawmakers. As long as you're online, like us on Facebook too. If you missed any part of this broadcast, it repeats tomorrow morning at 530. Coming up next, Georgia Traveler. Tonight, David and Michelle visit Lake Lanier Islands, the Winter Hotel at Americas, and Providence Canyon. Also, Ricky Bevington travels through historic Chickamauga Battlefield. Georgia Traveler is coming up next on GPB. Have a great night. This is a GPB original production.